Hello, welcome to the Cisco Modeling Labs version 2 walkthrough. I'll be your host, Joe Clark. In this walkthrough, we're going to look at some basics of getting started with uh, CML, with Cisco Modeling Labs. We'll look at how to log in, how to create your first lab, how to add some devices to that lab, then how to connect those devices, start them up, look at different aspects of, of how to access them, and then we'll look at how to stop the lab, wipe the lab, and delete the lab. So let's get started. When you first connect to uh, Cisco Modeling Labs, this is the uh, login interface you see. Um, I'm logging in as myself, but the first user, the user that you create out of the box will be admin. When I log into this account, um, I don't see any labs. I haven't created any labs yet, but this is the lab manager. This is where you will uh, create and or import labs in order to work with them. And a lab is the basic unit of Cisco modeling labs. It is that thing that you're going to interconnect devices. It's mostly self-contained, um, but we'll talk about things like external connectivity as well. So either I can either import a lab, as I mentioned, and I can do that either from an old viral 1.x or CML 1.x uh, XML file, a .viral file, or I can import the newer uh, YAML format from CML, Cisco Modeling Labs 2. What we're going to do is add a new lab, and we're going to give it a name, walk through lab, and then click on the tile to uh, launch this, and we get into the lab workbench. You can see it retained the title we put in. This is the canvas in which you will draw your network. And like any good canvas, you need a palette. And your palette is over here. And sometimes when you launch this, it'll be uh, collapsed, so you just click the Add Nodes. And here we can drag a few nodes onto the, uh, onto the canvas. And we're gonna do just some, some basics. Uh, we'll start with an iOS V node. This is a classic monolithic iOS. You could think of this like a, an ISR uh, 2K uh, type of router. It's not iOS XE. Uh, we'll add a, a iOS uh, VL2, a switch, and you can think of this like a, a Catalyst 3K type switch, even though these aren't hard, they, they don't line up to any specific hardware. They are virtual reference platforms. Uh, we'll add external connectivity node, and we'll go ahead and add a desktop node. Just give us some different flavor of the different node types. We'll collapse that. And now the next thing we need to do is connect these. We need to interconnect these nodes. So I'm going to have the uh, iOS uh, V instance be kind of like our, our lab router here. So things are going to connect through it. And then to get to the internet, I'm going to use my external connectivity. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then I'm going to put this switch, this iOS V uh, L2, as kind of my LAN switch inside. So I'm going to start connecting these things. And to connect, you click and hold this blue icon at the top of the halo. When you mouse over an icon, you get this halo. Click and hold the blue icon and drag it from one node to the node you want to connect. And this dialog will come up. And you can see that there are a number of interfaces, both for my external connectivity node and my iOS V node. I can explicitly pick the interfaces I want, or I can click the Use Next Available. So I'll just click Use Next Available, and then I'll just work down the line and connect my iOS V to iOS V L2. And again, I'll just say Use Next Available. And finally, I'll connect my switch to my desktop using Next Available. Now you also notice, I'll click back here on this router and go to the Interfaces tab down here. You notice that by default, iOS V instance has four interfaces and only four interfaces. If we think through before we start up our lab, before we, we hit the start button, we can add or pre-provision additional interfaces. And that can be very useful because if we want to add additional nodes later, after we've already powered everything on, we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have enough pre-provisioned interfaces. So one thing I like to do is go to things like a switch or a router and just add additional interfaces. And I can click this button a number of times until I reach the max interfaces. And here you can see I've allocated 16 total interfaces. So that's going to give me a lot of room to grow. I'm going to do the same thing here over on the switch. So you can see the switch only has four interfaces by default. So I'll add keep clicking add until I get max interfaces and then so I have a number of switch interfaces I can also use. 
The next thing I want to do is name these things so that it looks a little bit different than XCON 0, iOS v0, and so on and so forth. So I click on the node, then I click the node info tab, and I can give it a name. I'll call this internet. You can see it changes on the canvas. I'll call this, uh, eh, I'll just call it RTR0. Eh, let's make it a little bit better. Let's make it uh, core router for fun. And this I will call the iOS VL2 LAN switch. And this I will call desktop client. So we have a desktop client. So now I've named everything, um, interconnected everything, and I've, I've given myself enough interfaces to grow as I, as I continue to work with this lab. Um, now we can do some optional things. So I'll, I'll click back on the core router, and I'll click the Edit Config tab. And you can see here that there is a text field that I can type into. Um, this will, whatever I put in here, will serve as what's called the day zero or initial config for this device. This will be read only the first time the device boots, and it can serve to bootstrap the configuration. So I can give it a host name, for example, of core router. Um, and that will load automatically when the device boots. And over here, I can, you can see is already something in there for that. I'll give it host name LAN switch. Um, I could do other things. I could do a full iOS uh, config in there if I wanted to, um, but for purposes of this basic walkthrough, we'll just do some, some simple config. Now, I've got everything where I want. I can choose either to go click on the canvas itself and go to simulate and say start the whole lab, or I can click on individual uh, nodes and I can click start on each individual node, but I want to start the whole lab. So I'll go click the canvas again, so I'm essentially selecting all the devices, and I'll say start lab. What you'll notice is next to each one of the nodes, I get this little faint green circular icon. And that indicates that the nodes are booting. And they'll potentially disappear and reappear. That means now that they've got console access. So you notice that the halo changes around these nodes. Now there's this console button as well. And I can click on that, and it'll take me to that node's console tab. And I can click Open Console here in the browser. And then we can watch the console output as the device boots. And we can see um, how it's booting. When a node is fully initialized and ready to go, that green uh, circular outline will change into a solid green check. So, yep, this node is ready. And so I'll hop on over to the desktop client here. Uh, we can see that, in fact, on the console, I can log in get a login prompt. This desktop client is an Alpine Linux client. It's included by default in the reference platform ISO. The other thing interesting about this is because it's a desktop client, I can also click the VNC tab, click Open VNC, and with this client, I get a graphical user interface based on XFCE. And I can log into that, and I get a, a a GUI that I can interact with. You also notice here that this uh, slider, I can adjust the size of the lower uh, config and interaction pane with the size, uh, with the, the canvas. So if I need more space for the interaction pane, I can drag that up. And in the case of the desktop, now I have more of the desktop I can use. And then I can drag it down to see more of the canvas itself. So again, I can go back over here, and you can see the router is, is booting. It's not fully initialized yet, but you can see that it is making progress. Uh, it's loading the initial config, and it looks like it's just about done. It's, it says press uh, return to get started. CML is looking for a specific uh, syslog message to come out on the console uh, for those types of devices, and then it will say that that device is ready. So given a little time, we'll go over to the LAN switch. Same type of thing. LAN switch is, that looks like the LAN switch is a little bit more uh, uh, far along in, in booting. And we can see that, yep, in fact, it did LAN dash switch. The host name command did take effect. So it's pretty much ready to go. Same thing over here now with our, our core router. Pretty much ready to go. Now what we're going to do is shut down the lab. We're going to, um, we got it up, working with it, done some things, let's say, and now we want to shut it down. We want to shut all the nodes down. So we'll come back to the simulate tab and click on the lab canvas itself, and we'll click this stop lab button. 
all of these uh, green dots go to uh, gray X's. Now, the reason you didn't see the X before, before we powered anything on, is because there was no state associated with those devices. Once there is state associated with them, if they're not running, you're going to see this gray X there. This means that if you powered these devices back up, if you started the lab again, you would get the configuration that you last saved on the device. Due to write mem or copy run start, you would get that configuration back. All of the, the state that was on flash or in NVRAM, you get that back. Um, that's the persistence that Cisco Modeling Labs 2 offers. But if you wanted to get rid of this lab, if you wanted to remove all of the state and then say delete the lab or delete a node, you first need to wipe the node. That will allow you then to delete it. Uh, if you want to wipe the or delete the entire lab, you have to first wipe the entire lab. So for example, I can click on an individual node and say wipe node, and you'll note the X goes away. Now it has no state. I can manipulate the day zero or initial config again. Uh, if this boots, anything that I previously had there, it's not going to show up. Um, but I can also, and then I should say that I can come over to node info now that this node is wiped and I can delete an individual node. But if I wanted to delete this whole lab, I could come here and say wipe lab. Do I want to? Yes, I do. All of the gray X's go away. So all of these nodes have now no state associated with them. And then I can come back here to the lab manager. And now that I can use the... Um, a trash can icon, and I can delete the whole lab. I cleaned up what I've done. So this is one way that you can go from full lifecycle management, log in, create a lab, add some nodes, interconnect them, get all those interfaces the way you want, configure it, and then once you're done with the lab, you can wipe all the nodes and delete the lab. So that's this walkthrough. Like I said, it's going to be pretty basic. Um, in a subsequent walkthrough, we'll look at how we can start using the API to do everything we just saw here, but do it programmatically. So come back, stay tuned, look forward to talking to you again. Thanks.